In this video, I will show you how to perform one-way ANOVA in R. One-way ANOVA is used to compare the means of more than two groups. I will be analyzing the data where I have people whose weight loss was recorded from taking three different types of diet. The first thing we will do is import our data into R. We need to set our working directory before loading the data. The working directory is the location of any files you read into R or save out of R. We type set wd and then we type the working directory in quotation marks and brackets. Alternatively, you can go to session, set working directory, and choose the directory where you save your file. I'm going to run this line of code. Then we load the CSV file, which contains the data, by typing read.csv and save this data to a data frame called my underscore data. Now we can see that the data has been loaded into R. If the data is not too big, you can view the data by clicking the data frame under the environment. This is the data and how it looks in terms of the overall structure. We have different variables here. The first column indicates the person, and we have 78 people here. There are three different types of diet. Diet 1, 2, and 3. We have 24 people with diet type 1, 27 with diet 2, and 27 with diet 3. Their weight was recorded before and after the diet, and the weight loss was calculated. We are interested in whether there is any difference in the means of weight loss among the three diets. We can also check the structure of our data by typing str with the data name in bracket. We can see here the weight loss is in the form of numeric, which is good. However, the diet is an integer and we would like to have it as a factor. If we do not change the variable diet to a factor, R will treat it as a continuous variable since we save it as 1, 2, 3 in the CSV file. We use s.factor and the dollar sign allows you to extract the variable by its name, diet, in the data frame called myData. And we assign this factor to replace the original column called diet in our data frame. Now we can check the levels of the factor by typing levels and put the variable diet in the bracket. We can see that there are three levels of diet, diet 1, 2, and 3. Let's check the structure of our data again by running this line of code. We can see that the diet is changed to a factor now we have the data ready. Before we conduct one-way ANOVA, another important thing we should be thinking about is visualize our data. There are different ways we can plot our data. We can either make a box plot or a mean plot with arrow bars. Here, we are going to produce a mean plot with arrow bars for each diet group. I already have the mean plot produced here. We will use the ggpopr package here to call a function in order to produce a more elegant plot. You need to install the package by typing install.packages 
and put the name of the package in quotation marks and brackets. I have already installed this package, so I only run this line, the library function, to load the package. We use the function ggline to plot a figure on the right. We need to specify the data frame we are going to use, which is my data, the x-axis in the plot, which is variable diet, and the y-axis, weight loss. In order to add other elements to the plot, we type add here and include two elements, mean SE and jitter. The jitter will add a small amount of random variation to the location of each point. With the jitter introduced, we can see in the plot that the data is not overlapping for each group. Then we specify the name for y-axis and the x-axis. Here, what we have is the data laid out for each diet type, type 1, 2, and 3. The mean and error bar are also plotted for each diet type. It appears that the mean of weight loss is higher on average in type 3. But can we be confident of this? Then the next thing to do is to conduct a one-way ANOVA. We call the function AOV and we first type the continuous variable weight loss, a tilt, and then the factor variable diet. We also need to specify where the data comes from, which is actually my data. Let's run this line. We will call the summary of the analysis using function summary. res underscore AOV is where we save the results of one-way ANOVA. What you will see in the summary below here presents us the degree of freedom and the sum of square. This mean square represents the variation between the diet type and the 5.74 here represents the mean square of the arrow which is variation within the diet. F value is calculated and here is the corresponding P value. The P value is smaller than the significance level 0.05. This shows that there is significant difference of the means of weight loss between the three diet groups. However, before we can confirm the results of rejecting non-hypothesis, we need to check the assumptions of our one-way ANOVA. The ANOVA test assumes that the data is normally distributed and the variance across groups are equal. We can check the assumptions with some diagnostic plots. The residual versus the fitted plot can be used to check the homogeneity of variances. Here we type plot and this object res underscore AOV is saved from conducting our ANOVA analysis and it has many different features. One of the features is plotting the residuals and we specify one here in order to plot the residuals. So now we run this line. We can see from the plot that the variance of our residuals are relatively equal among the three groups. There is no evident relationships between residuals and fitted values, which is good. So we can assume the homogeneity of variances now. Alternatively, we can use the Levine's test for the original data in order to check the homogeneity of variances. We will need to use a function in the package car, so we load the library car here. And we use the function Levine test. We type weight loss, a tilt, and a diet. We also need to specify the data frame we are using. 
Here is the result. We can see that the p-value is not less than the significance level of 0.05. This means that there is no evidence to suggest that the variance across group is significantly different. Another assumption that we need to check is the normality assumption. We can test the normality of residuals by plotting a QQ plot. We type the plot function again and specify 2 here. So in a QQ plot, the quantiles of the residuals are plotted against the quantiles of the normal distribution. A 45 degree reference line is also plotted. If we have a normal distribution, the plot would approximately follow a straight line. As all the points fall approximately along this reference line here, we consume normality of residuals. The normality conclusion can be tested by the Shapiro-Wilk test. We first extract the residuals and save it into AOV residuals. And then we type Shapiro.test. We can see from the output here, the p-value is not less than the significance level of 0.05, which finds that there is no evidence to suggest violation of normality. So now we have tested assumptions of running one-way ANOVA. We can really conclude that there is significant difference of the means of weight loss between the three diet groups. However, we don't know which pairs of groups are different. We can answer this question by performing post hoc tests. We are using the Turkey Onus Significant Differences test here to determine if the mean difference between specific pairs of group are statistically significant. Here is the Turkey HSD function and we will be using our saved results rest underscore AOV again. We can see from the output that the difference between diet 3 and diet 1 is statistically significant with an adjusted p-value of 0.02. And the difference between 3 and 2 is also statistically significant with adjusted p-value of 0.0. 478. However, we can't see any statistically significant difference between diet 1 and 2. We can also go back to our first plot. In this plot, the mean of weight loss for diet 3 is higher than the other two, while the mean for diet 1 and 2 are very close. Apart from doing a Turkey HSD test, we can also do pairwise t-tests with corrections for multiple testing. We call the function pairwise.t.test and use the benjamini hogberg method to adjust the p-values. The BH method here controls the false discovery rate for multiple testing. The result is a table of p-values here for the pairwise comparisons. Again, we can see that diet 3 is significantly different from both diet 1 and diet 2, but diet 1 is not significantly different from diet 2. So this is a summary of how you would perform a one-way ANOVA in R.